Hi, Tina Tacy here. I'm a media personality. I do a show called Login Extra on NTV Uganda. I hope you guys catch that. I also run a production company, Production Progress Africa, which also does, you know, production, content creation, which also, by the way, is a production company that produces Login, Second Chance, among, you know, other productions. Uh, my name is Anita. Uh, Anita and Tommy and Jojo Mohanji. I'm married. Uh, it's going to be 20 years this May. I have three children. Um, my background, I studied uh, mass communication. I majored in photojournalism and um, advertising. I didn't do any of that. And uh, when I eventually finished, I did uh, writing. Writing is my passion. It's my go-to after everything is said and done. Away from that, I do digital partnerships, which in this day and era we call influencing. I represent a number of brands, um, Sheraton Kampala, um, the face of Uganda Waraji, the best gin, <laughs> in my own opinion, to come out of, you know, you know Uganda. I also represent Ethiopian Airlines on the Ugandan level, I'm their brand ambassador. You know, I also represent Melabim, <laughs> a beauty shop. And you know, yeah, that's pretty much what you guys see on the surface. But besides that, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. I run an online shop called The Good Stuff UG, which really beautifies homes. We have everything from couch, mirror, decor, everyday use stuff that sometimes you didn't know you needed, but then when you see it, like, oh my God, that would simplify my life in the kitchen and what. So yeah, that's what I'm really into. I run a retail store called Harvey's Accessories. That's also my other pride and joy. I've been doing it for about 16 years. I got it from my mom, it was bought from my mom and it's like my first baby i love it i love what i do i'm a child of god and i love beautiful things i love flowers i can go on and on but uh, for now that's me are women better yes and no i feel women earlier maybe had uh, less opportunities maybe to stand up and be counted, but uh, they had, uh, and now they have more opportunities to do what they want to do, but now they have more challenges dealing with the opportunities that have been given to them. I feel like women nowadays are under so much pressure. Yes, I think women are better off today. I mean, when they look back, like you said, our moms, our aunties, our grandmas. Oh, wow. The gender roles were kind of like so, you know, hardened on the women's side. I think with enlightenment, with the years passed by, technology, learning, getting skilled, women have, you know, up their games. We are in a good space now. We're not there yet, 100%, but I feel like, yeah, we are better off today. I feel that, like the woman nowadays is, um, we're lost in a, in a battle to maybe get on the same footing with men or with each other. Way back, you know what they say, like women belong to the kitchen. And it was like a whole patriarchy kind of setup where, you know, our fathers are going to go out there and do whatever they want. Of course, they're the breadwinners, but our roles were, our grandmothers and mothers roles were, you know, to have children, take care of home, you know, cook, and that's it. They don't have views about other things, really, except take care of home. Now, I know you know that things have changed, really. We are in the boardrooms, we are equally in the same spaces as the, as the men are, and I think, that's a good and a bad thing, but mainly a good thing. With these opportunities have come challenge, eco challenges, because they've given you the right to do as you please. Mm -hmm. So you are under pressure to exert yourself. Our parents had uh, 
they had their limitations. You can do this, you can do this. But in the limitations, you're sheltered. You're sheltered by some things. But now, we've all been thrown into, the, into a pit, so to speak. I think we're not very kind to ourselves in the sense that we put a lot of pressure on ourselves. When I say we don't celebrate our achievements enough, I feel like even when a woman has achieved to a level of, or oh, she is CEO, she's the managing partner, if, for example, she's not married or with kids, is that pressure of, I mean, you cannot be a leader if you're not married or if where are your kids? I mean, how are you going to be able to take care of this whole, you know, corporation company if you, we don't see that in your family setup? We put pressure on ourselves to look a certain way, which we should. We should look beautiful because we say we should celebrate our beauty. But in doing that, we want to have our lips look a certain way if they're not full enough, if uh, your butt is not full enough. We forget to celebrate ourselves in the moment because we are looking to how we should look. So I think like women have held back sometimes on celebrating themselves in their achievements that they've worked so hard to get because somehow society has said, turn it down, you know, at a certain level, be approachable. <laughs> Don't come with the bands you work hard for because, oh, your day is going to turn up in, I don't know what, an Uber. So, yeah, we don't celebrate ourselves much in the things we have achieved and worked hard for because of those, yeah. So I think women have kind of like even felt intimidated to go all out sometimes because there is that bit you want to go you know, on full speed, uh, achieve whatever you want to achieve, but then there's also that limitation of maybe I'm moving too fast. Uh, one time I was, I dropped my daughters off for a party. And when I went to pick them up, we crossed paths with other young men. And when we crossed paths, these young men were talking about an, another girl who'd gone past and they made a remark that she looked nothing like she did on her snap, Snapchat. So I ran with that and I told my girls because I'm raising young women, I'm raising teenage girls who battle with what society expects them to look like. So I go back, I take a look back at the girl that they were talking about and she looks for all intents and purposes beautiful. But which reverts me back to the question, the answer that I gave earlier. The perfect beauty standards are all round. The perfect face, the beautiful big eyes, the pointy nose, the beautiful lips, the perfect body. Everything, everything that we touch is supposed to be at its perfect, at its best. Um, um, there is the whole forever young campaign that's going around that women are now determined like we've even just lost it anti-aging has become it's a good thing i mean like take care of yourself sunscreen you know lotion yourself just drink water just take care of yourself but now as you grow older i know you've read a lot of things like when you turn 30 this thing when you turn 40 like there's just always something to look forward to and women are like on that pressure to look young but then it's become a reality that people don't even talk about it they just say snatch pack look the part don't be at home looking like that i'm like okay that's too much pressure <laughs> could do better um as a male queen myself <laughs> the male queens out there need to know that um sunscreening is like daily prayer that's what i can say can i make them two <laughs> uh one moisturize two sunscreen every day all day acne for me has been 
like the real carrying of the acne because I wear a lot of makeup for my job, but also the cleanup after. Um, I have had uh, I've had issues with loyalty to body care routines. Every time I hear someone say, "Oh, this is the go-to," I jump on that. That has been my greatest struggle. We work late and then you go back home. The whole, oh my God, I don't know if there are other men or queens out there who are struggling with the aftermath of, you know, you wear makeup, then you have to like double cleanse, wash your face, you know, do the whole routine at 4 a.m., 5 a.m. for some of us to still go out. It's been a struggle. First of all, I must confess, I'm very inconsistent. <laughs> Skin care and beauty products. Shout out to you, Mega Queens, who are really consistent. You're doing amazing because it's not easy. Like you, like you get all these products, like I'll get the scrub, I'll get everything, and I'm like, Mandy. My biggest beauty secret has has been the moisturizing. I live to moisturize. I never get into bed without moisturizing. The beauty secret for me has been drinking water. Like, don't take that lightly. I now like drink water is not to be a water drinker but i see the difference and do not just moisturize where people will see some people like to dress up and then put on the lotion no you come from the bathroom your body is dumb you get your butter you work it from your toes right up to the tip on your skincare routine if you have one if you have products that you need to use look at them and think about your money <laughs> <laughs> I don't much you've invested in them and use them, you know, use the products you buy. Yes and no. It's not a hype because, I mean, just like any other body care and everything we take care of in our lives, you have to take care of yourself. I mean, the way you look is very important. It's the first thing people see. They don't see, oh, she's a doctor. Oh, she's a, no, they first see how you look like. Then you start to speak. So your first impression is very important and that is how you look, your hair, your skin. It's not a hype. Um, no, I don't think it is hyped. I think we do not give it as much attention as we should. I think our skin, even biological, biologically speaking, is one of the biggest organs that we have. We should give it the hype. In fact, we should give it more than the hype. But then with time, now we have the pressures. Like I said, it has now become too much. There's too many products on the market. More like makeup, I would read it, because when you look at people that have I'll give a very interesting example. Rihanna hasn't sung in six months. She has Fenty Beauty. She's making her money. And as a young girl, I like, I have talent, but I don't have to do because this is what is working in the now. So then it becomes a hype. I will go with life, energy, beauty. Uh, I just feel like I've, I've been reborn I've been reborn, my new age, so I go with the life. And the energy backs up the life because it's the same energy that I start the new life with. The beauty will go without saying. I look at myself and it's a beautiful sight to behold. Oh, I've actually never gotten a chance to be a magazine cover girl. But if I were to be described on a magazine cover, I think Tina would be vibey because there's no Tina without a vibe. Um, there would be ambition in there, so ambitious, because that's what makes the person that I am. And then, treasure. Have you ever been on a treasure hunt? <laughs> that's who I am. Uh, we'll go with Harvey's Accessories. Harvey's Accessories is um, a woman-owned business, and I get so much joy when someone comes in and and says, I bought this and I, wore it, and I wore this at my wedding, or I bought this gift for my mother from your shop and they loved it. One uh, very, very, very interesting online shop. It is basically like deco and everyday use stuff you did not think you needed. But then when you see it, you're like, oh my God, when I'm cooking, I put my spoon on top of the saucepan. 
but then there's a spoon rest I'll you know just rather put it on a spoon rest instead of like messing the whole suspender and stuff so that's what I didn't 